Just yesterday morning, there was a massive eruption at Mount Etna in Italy, and people were running for their lives. Tourists were sprinting down Mount Etna as lava exploded behind them, and a mile high ash cloud turned the sky black. Partial crater collapse set off non stop blasts, and a rolling firestorm of gas and ash shot down the mountain. Planes were grounded, towns were coated in dust. Mount Etna's latest eruption is far more dangerous than experts predicted. So a massive eruption just went off at Mount Etna in Italy. And people were literally running for their lives. Boiling rock came crashing down one side of the volcano, sending a huge ash cloud more than a mile into the sky. Tourists on the mountain were running down to escape as the ash exploded behind them. Some actually paused to take pictures and video, but most were just trying to get out of there. The eruption was sudden, loud, and way more intense than anyone would have expected. Trouble started late at night with deep volcanic tremors around 10 p.m. By early morning, things had escalated into these continuous explosions. You could see the ash cloud from miles away started drifting across the skyline, turning the sky dark and coating nearby towns in this layer of dust. Ash settled on buildings, roads, and cars. The cloud grew so thick it actually blocked out the sun. The eruption triggered a red aviation alert, meaning pilots had to stay the hell away from the area. Mount Etna's been active for years, but this time things escalated, and they escalated quickly. Just a few hours before, things seemed relatively calm. There were some minor tremors, nothing unusual though. But then, out of nowhere, the explosions started. Even now, at the time of recording this, anyway, the gray cloud is still hanging over the island. Like I said though, Etna isn't new to eruptions. This volcano has been active for thousands of years. It's the tallest in Europe and one of the most studied on Earth, but obviously it's still pretty unpredictable. That's because of where it sits, right along the boundary between two tectonic plates. The African and Eurasian plates push against each other here, which constantly feeds magma into the system below. Most volcanoes have long gaps between major eruptions, but Etna has smaller eruptions almost all the time. Gas releases, lava flows, minor ash plumes, but every so often things get more serious. Major eruptions like this one usually follow signs. There are tremors, heat rises, there's gas buildup, but the timing is hard to pin down. Scientists have been watching Etna since ancient times, with recordings dating back to at least 1500 BCE. Big events have hit in 1669, 1928, 2001, and again, more recently. The 1669 eruption destroyed entire villages, but even with constant monitoring and new technology like satellites and thermal imaging, eruptions like the one yesterday still catch people off guard. One of the first things people noticed was all the ash. It spread very fast, drifting across towns and forcing people inside. The eruption shot the ash plume over 6,000 meters, or just over three and a half miles into the sky. Volcanic ash isn't smoke, it's made of tiny, jagged particles of rock and glass. Now, if a plane were to fly through that, its engines could be destroyed in minutes. So as soon as the alert went out, planes were rerouted, flights in and out of Catania were delayed, and some aircraft had to land at different airports. And the ash fell as well. Everything got coated, cars, roofs, the roads were messed. People had to wear masks outside. Cleanup teams have moved in, but the ash just keeps coming. What made this round of ash so tough to deal with is how fast it came. Usually there's more warning this time, people woke up to find their streets already covered. Not long after the eruption began, a section of Etna's southeastern crater collapsed. And that's when things got really bad. Crater collapses aren't uncommon on active volcanoes, but they usually build up slowly. This one did not. When it gave way, it suddenly changed how pressure was being released. So suddenly, this wave of powerful explosions turned a steady eruption into something a lot more chaotic. Lava wasn't just pouring out now, it shot into the air. Rock, ash, and gas came with it, blasting in fast bursts. Scientists call this Strombolian activity. People near the volcano reported hearing these deep bangs and feeling slight tremors as it happened. 
INGV, Italy's Volcano Monitoring Agency, confirmed the seismic activity spiked right after the collapse. That collapse also created space for lava to surge upward more violently than usual. This kind of shift makes it harder to predict what's coming next. Pressure builds in strange ways and new vents can open without warning. That's part of why this eruption got so dangerous so fast. It wasn't just about what came out of the volcano, it was about how suddenly the structure of the mountain changed. The scariest moment was when a pyroclastic flow barreled down the southeastern side of the mountain. This is the kind of thing that gets people killed if they're in the wrong place. A pyroclastic flow is a burning cloud of ash, gas, and rock moving at speeds of up to 450 miles per hour. It can reach temperatures of over a thousand degrees Celsius. Nothing in its path survives. Thankfully, this one was mostly contained to a deep groove that kind of funneled it away from towns. Still, the fact that it happened at all, pretty scary. Etna doesn't usually produce pyroclastic flows, so this eruption was intense enough to completely destabilize part of the mountain. These kinds of flows can cause landslides and mud flows as well. If this one had veered just a little off course, the impact could have been far worse. Once this eruption started, the southeastern crater turned into what felt like a non-stop series of explosions. These explosions hurled blobs of molten rock high into the sky every few seconds. You could see the flashes from miles away and people reported these deep rumbles that shook their windows. Usually Etna's explosions are spaced out, but this time it just kept going. Constant pressure buildup and release put more stress on the volcano, increasing the risk of collapse or lava overflow. Tourists were pulled away from access points and air traffic stayed limited because of how unpredictable the situation was. The constant explosions wore down the crater walls, making it harder to predict what part of the mountain might give way next. At the time of recording this, Things are stable again, but this may not be over. This wasn't the first time Etna erupted, even this year. It's just the biggest. Back in February, there was a smaller eruption with lava flows, a decent amount of ash shot out. It was enough to shut down a few hiking trails and cancel flights, but nothing too dramatic. Then in May, there was another eruption. That one was a little more intense. Lava fountains, stronger tremors, more ashfall. Still, it didn't seem like a major red flag at the time, but now looking back, it's clear these weren't isolated events. They were signs, warnings. Each eruption was kind of building on the last. The National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology even flagged this pattern earlier in the year though, saying Edna was showing some concerning signs. Instead of a single eruption and then this long stretch of quiet, it seemed to be ramping up for something larger and maybe this isn't the end of it. So where does that leave us now? Well, ever since the eruption started, Italy's volcano experts at INGV have been watching it. Their sensors picked up the early tremors and everything that followed. Lava bursts, ash plumes, seismic spikes, all of it. So they've been sending out regular updates to locals, airports, and emergency crews. The big concern right now is the crater. That southeastern section is still unstable and there's a real worry that it could collapse again. If it does, it might set off more lava flows or worse, another pyroclastic flow. So far, the explosions haven't let up enough for anyone to say it's calming down fully. There's still a thick ash plume hanging over the area and some flights are being rerouted just in case. Towns nearby haven't had to evacuate, but people are being warned to stay away from the summit. Roads leading up are being closed off as a precaution. The truth is the eruption probably isn't over. INGV has seen this kind of behavior from Etna before, but that doesn't mean they can predict exactly what's next. All they can do now is keep monitoring it around the clock and be ready if things change again. I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.